The Lord said to me, You are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, Grant, we pray, that we who have known the, mis the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for the flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God hero, Father forever, 
Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and patience, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. They shall exalt before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the people with his constancy. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse himself for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you,
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor in Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to all people on earth. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Coming to Mass must always be the first consideration for Christmas, so it's very good to see you all here. And so on behalf of Father Bierman, Father Parrott, and myself and all the staff, I extend to you best wishes for a very Merry Christmas. One of our many Christmas carols says that this is the most wonderful time of the year. There's definitely something very special and wonderful about it. It brings up memories of Christmases in years past, sometimes many years past. We also sing cheerfully about chestnuts roasting on an open fire, sugar plums, figgy pudding, and sleigh bells. I'm pretty sure I've never eaten any of those foods, and I know I've never hitched a horse to a sleigh. But we sing about it. It's tradition. There are many, many good things about this season. Setting this year aside for the moment, Celebrating Christmas has really become a cultural phenomena with the rushing around and buying of gifts, partying, the parties, the eggnog and the goodies. And of course, who can forget St. Nicholas, also known as Santa Claus. These are all good and wonderful traditions, but as you know, it's only a very small part of what Christmas really is. Marie and I have developed our own family traditions that are meaningful to us, and I'm sure you have your own as well. I have some fond memories of my childhood Christmases also. It seemed that it took forever to arrive once people started talking about it and decorating, and lately uh, it, it starts earlier and earlier, so the wait gets longer. Anyway, it seems like it's been a long time coming, and now the day is here. Our yearly wait for Christmas, however, pales in comparison to the long, long wait that the Israelites experienced as they yearned for the coming of the Anointed One, the Messiah. All their hopes for freedom from bondage and for salvation was firmly rooted in this future promise 
from the prophets of old. In the earlier gospel at the vigil uh, were the genealogy of Jesus. There were some 42 generations from the clear promise of the Messiah given to Abraham by God until Jesus' birth. That's somewhere between 900 and 1300 years that they waited for this blessed event that we celebrate today. And was it, what does it mean uh, for our world? What does it mean for us today? Well, it means rescue from sin and darkness. With COVID-19, we have all experienced more darkness and difficulty in 2020 than we really care to remember. We've just experienced on the calendar year the longest night of the year. From this time forward, the dark of night will be lessened and the light of day will be increased. Isaiah the prophet said in the first reading, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Jesus is the light of the world. It was promised and then repeatedly prophesied from long ages past, right up to the time of St. John the Baptist. It was part of God's plan from the very beginning. God himself would come to earth as a frail human baby born to a simple holy family in order to bring a light so powerful that it would overcome the darkness of sin and death and provide a way to ultimate and eternal joy. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the bread of life. He was born in a stable in very difficult circumstances. As we are surrounded by the sights, sounds, and smells of Christmas in our day, let's ponder for a moment what the real sights, sounds, and smells were surrounding this simple holy family on that first Christmas. Cold and tired from their journey, their best accommodations were some dry straw and a stable which provided essentially nothing more than a windbreak and some warmth from the body heat of the restless animals. Ill-equipped for the birth, the time was upon them. Mary putting her full trust in God and some trust in Joseph brings forth life. A miracle for sure under any circumstances, but this was God himself being born in the crudest and poorest conditions. Wrapped tightly and lovingly in blankets, the creator of the universe is laid in a trough meant for feeding animals. How fitting that he is here at this place on this table, a place for us to be fed and nourished by the bread of life. As we partake of this sac sacred meal today, let us be mindful of the foreshadowing of this sacrament in that stable so many years ago. Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus is the Word of God. St. John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. God the Son was present from all eternity. It was through him that all things were made. By his powerful Word, all creation, all women and men, all plants and animals, mountains and oceans came to be. It was in this created world that the birth of the Christ occurred. What an amazing reversal that the creative power of the word is reduced to the cries and coos of a baby born of the very creatures that only exist by his word. By the Holy Spirit, he also made the promise to Abraham, gave voice to the prophets who proclaimed it and inspired the writers of Holy Scriptures. The Bible is the true and inerrant chronicle of this plan. Jesus is the Word of God. What does it all mean for me and you today? Jesus' birth is the personal invitation by the God of the universe to an eternal relationship of love. His life and mission in the fullness of time is the means by which it is accomplished. We cannot be just bystanders, however. The coming of Christ is a historical fact, yes. His importance and identity is a matter of truth by faith. How will you respond? How will you respond? 
to his invitation. Our lives are transformed by the degree that we accept this invitation. Say yes to him by asking him to come into your life daily. He comes to us in many ways, and when we receive the sacraments, we receive him and his grace. So he comes to us as the light of the world, the sacrament of confession. We cooperate with his grace to turn from all darkness to the light. The best way to accomplish this is to go to confession frequently. It's not very popular much anymore to go to confession. This particular sacrament is probably the most neglected among all the sacraments. But only by going to this sacrament, by confessing our sins, can we be rid of the darkness of sin and brought into the light. Jesus is the bread of life, Holy Communion. Having confessed our sins, we must receive Holy Communion for the nourishment and sustenance and the power we need to live the life that he's invited us to. Right here on this altar, we have the miracle of Jesus truly present. and We are blessed to be able to receive him often. The word of God, attend mass often. We become familiar with the transforming power of the word of God. If possible, look at the readings before mass. And when we come to mass, listen carefully as the word is proclaimed and the homily is given. This gives us practical direction for living as a Catholic Christian. The church has given us great insight into the Bible and it is good to study it and pray it daily if possible. Set time aside for reading, studying, and then living out the word of God in the Bible. In conclusion, as you go to celebrate your traditions this Christmas, at whatever level you can. I pray that you will experience Jesus more fully in your life and in the lives of family and friends. No matter where you are in your spiritual life right now, Jesus invites you into an even deeper love, a greater love, and an eternal love in the holy family of God. May the birth of Jesus bring you peace and joy this Christmas. Twice a year, once on the Annunciation, when Mary conceived Jesus in her womb, and on Christmas, when Jesus is born, during the recitation of the Creed, we genuflect during the words, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. So as we recite the Creed tonight, we'll genuflect at those two lines. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Turning to the Lord, we bring to him our needs and our petitions. Our response, Jesus Emmanuel, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all who serve the church, that God will inspire them in leading us to deeper faith and greater love during this Christmas season, we pray. Jesus Emmanuel, hear our prayer. For lasting harmony and peace, that Christ, the Prince of Peace, will put an end to all hatred, hostility, and division, we pray. Jesus Emmanuel, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing darkness through isolation, depression, grief, or violence, that the light of Christ may scatter the darkness and bring hope to their hearts, we pray. Jesus Emmanuel, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, and those in prison, that the coming of Christ may bring hope, healing, and new possibilities for them, we pray. Jesus Emmanuel, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, that God will heal the sick, strengthen the caregivers, and guide the distribution and administration of the vaccines, we pray. Jesus Emmanuel, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Maria Juarez, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Jesus Emmanuel, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone before us in death, may they rest in the peace of Christ forever, we pray. Jesus Emmanuel, hear our prayer. For all of us here today, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that this holy season of Christmas may be filled with peace, hope, and joy, we pray. Jesus Emmanuel, hear our prayer. We pray, O Lord our God, that the Virgin Mary, who merited to bear God and man in her chaste womb, may commend the prayers of your faithful in your sight. Through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred night on which blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world and in communion with those whose memory we venerate especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merit, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Word became flesh, and we have seen his glory.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. A couple of announcements here at the end of Mass. Your Christmas gift from the church is available to be picked up in the gathering space after, after Mass tonight. Uh, there are two books you can choose from, Do Something Beautiful for God with Mother Teresa or I Heard God Laugh by Matthew Kelly. Being mindful of the precautions we have set forth during COVID, the COVID pandemic, we're asking everyone to please remain in your seats after Mass to be dismissed by our ushers. We are also asking you to please refrain from socializing in the gathering space so that you can maintain social distancing. As well, uh, of course, once again, we hope everybody has a blessed Christmas uh, and a blessed Christmas season. Um, if you're able to join with your families, great. And if you are separated uh, and can't get together, whether because of the pandemic or some other reason, um, if someone's in the military or something, uh, hopefully you can still reach out to them, make sure they know they're loved, and you can uh, express those bonds of affection. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives, and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you shares with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join in our prayer after Mass. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Oh, 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 oh. 